Well, good morning everybody, and what a fantastic day we've got today. Absolutely brilliant. Yesterday was really poor again, but uh, a really nice day today. I can feel the sun on my skin, it's burning. So what I want to do today is I'm going to do a bit of pond maintenance. I want to clean the skimmer out, I want to hoover the pond out, give it a good clean out. Then I'm going to treat the pond. I mean, Nellie's problem could be parasites. We don't know and obviously if she, if it is parasites that's giving her all these problems they're probably in the pond and on the other koi. I mean I've got nobody else suffering with anything like it so I don't know but as a precaution I'm going to treat the pond over the next two or three weeks. It's already had one dose of formalakite. It's now due for the second dose so I want to get that in once I've hoovered it out. Then I should give it just over a week just to clear that and it's going to get a dose of fluxol. So I'm going to get a dose of fluke solve in there as well and then I shall treat again with the fluke solve in three weeks time because the actual fluke solve will actually treat worms as well if your fish has got any worms and it will clear them out as well. The reason for treating in three weeks time is because these flukes can lay eggs and there isn't a treatment out there that kills the eggs so you have to wait for the eggs to hatch and then treat again in three weeks time to kill any of the young flukes off. But that's what I'm going to do just to see if it helps Nelly a little bit, see if it is a parasite problem. I've had nothing on any of the other fish, all the other fish are fine. I don't really know, but I'm going to do it anyway just to make sure, see if it helps Nelly at all. She's not up and about like she should be and she's not feeding like she should be, so I'm still a little bit worried about her. That's the trouble really, she gets under them lily leaves and we don't see her. She still looks fine, she's just not as active as she should be, so I'm going to try another route and we're going to go down the parasite route, see if we can do it that way. But everything else is fine, all the other fish are fine. They're no problem at all. It's just Nelly. We've just got to get her sorted. But it's getting to that time of year. We're soon going to have to start thinking about winter. Blimey, where did the summer go? Doesn't seem five minutes. We was all dying to get started on the pond season. And now it's September. It's nearly over. So I'm going to get on. I'm going to do a bit of pond maintenance. I'm going to clean the skimmer out. And I'm going to clean the skimmer in the shed out. The protein skimmer and I'm going to vac my pond out and then I'm going to give it a treatment. So I've got plenty of work ahead of me today. That will keep me busy for quite a while. Okay, one job down. That's the skimmer clean out. It's okay for another few days. Nearly a week I think that will last now. It does all depend on how many leaves blow off the trees. But that's the skimmer clean out. So on to the next job. Okay, skimmer done. I'm now going to give the pond a good vacking out. Give that a good bashing and then I want to uh, trim these lilies back a bit if I can, if I get time. I'm running out of time today for some reason. Now you'd probably think why didn't he trim the lilies first and then do the vacking, which seems a sensible way to go. But I do like to go over the bottom of the pond with the vac first and it'll pick up any stones they've pulled out. I've still got a lily basket under there they can get into, so if there's any stones on the pond being as I get in the pond to trim my lilies back, I don't want to uh, be treading on any stones or anything. So this is why I vac it first and then we'll trim the lilies back. Well guys, doing that bit of vacking has brought Nelly out. Mind you, we can't see her very well because it's cloudy in there. But it has brought her out and she's about... She's looking okay. She's going hide behind their mothers now. But she is looking okay, just down that side, just going back under the lily. But it has flushed her out a bit, we did get a glimpse of her. Why she's hiding under there I've no idea, there's still something wrong obviously. We'll keep trying, I've gone over it once with the vac, didn't get too much out, wasn't too bad. As you can see in there, that's what I've taken out, so I'm just going to clean that out. And I might just whip over it once more, see if we can get any more out. As you know, doing it this way I don't lose any water, so I can vacuum as long as I like. I'll get that out, clean the uh, sieve out, and give it another go. Okay guys, vacuuming all done. What I want to do, what I have done actually, is up the top there I've taken my 
my inflow pipes off and stirring the water up up there hopefully that will push all the dirt that's thinking of settling down to the deep end so I'm now going to have a quick cup of tea just while it clears a bit and settles a bit and then I'm just going to go over the deep end once more and then that'll be it pack it all away so that'll be it hoovered then okay guys that's the pond skimmer done and the vacuuming out so now what I want to do in here is I'm going to give the protein skimmer a clean as you can see it needs doing so I'm just going to whip the foam extractor off and uh, give the dome a good clean out and inside just to make sure it's all nice and clean and then strike it back up again. So I'm going to get it shut down and whip them screws out and take the top off. Well, as you can see, the inside is worse than it looked from the outside. It was really well due for a clean, so I've got to get all that lot out and clean it up. I shall also clean inside the actual cylinder itself. I should just give that a wipe down, wipe round as far down as I can get. So we'll get them clean up and then we'll get it put back together. Right, well that's what it should look like when it's all done. Nice and clean and see-through even. That's that bit. I've been down inside the cylinder. I've had the air stones out. Not sure that you'll see much in there. But I've cleaned it all down inside there as well. So it's had a good old clean. I've cleaned the actual pipe itself as well, the uh, water level indicator. So I've done that. So it's had a good old clean out. Now I'll get it all put back together and we'll get it up and running again. Okay, we're all back together and ready to strike it up again. So it's all been cleaned out from top to bottom. Getting quite manky up the top here. So I'll clean all that out. So it's had a good old clean. So now I'm going to put the air pump back on. So we've got air going in and now I'm going to switch the pump on for the water. So we should see it start to fill up in here shortly. Just give it a minute. Here it comes. So it's starting to fill up inside the chamber. You can see it coming up this pipe up the water level pipe you can see it coming up there I'm hoping it's going to stop about here somewhere if not we shall just have to keep our eye on it it should start to flow back into the moving bed now and we've got the water level in there blimey that looks different <laughs> so we've got the water level in there this isn't going to do anything for a day or so I think they don't work too well when they're clean so we might have to give it a little while but we're all back up and running and it's had a good old clean out so everything should be okay so there we go that's it for another month or two okay guys while the pond's cloudy it is clearing up quite quick but while it's cloudy i'm going to give it its second dose of formalakite get that in I might as well get that job out of the way and then just over a week I shall give it a hit of the fluke sole just to clear any parasites or anything that might be in there and might be giving Nelly problems I'll get this in and then like I say in a week or so's time it'll get a dose of fluke sole by the way if you ever do decide to use this stuff do be careful because it stains instantly so I'll just, I just move everything onto the grass, it doesn't matter if it stains a bit of grass but just in case you drip some or anything on your pavement or whatever it will stain terribly, You'll get it on your, if you get it on your hands as well it takes some getting off so do be careful with it when you use it it's not for flukes, it says it is but don't believe it but it is good for costia and uh, nick and that sort of thing so we'll get this in the pond and that'll be the second dose of that then. And there we go, you won't see a lot in there. That's got the second dose in, so give it a week now. That'll take a couple of days to clear up. Give it a week, and like I say, I'll give it a dose of clover leaf. See if it helps. A quick update on the lily situation. 
All those that's out there that has been asking how I keep lilies with koi, because their koi are pulling theirs to pieces, which they did my one up this end, they pulled it to pieces. So for those of you that's interested in having the lilies in the pond, what you actually need, and I'm probably going to pronounce this totally wrong, but it is actually Nymphia Marsilia Albida. Now I will put it on screen because I'm not sure whether I've got that right or not, but I will put it on screen for you, but that's the one. It's also called the White European Lily. So that's its common name I would imagine. But thanks to these guys, they've put me right and told me what it is. So anybody interested, that's what you want. You want the white European lily, Nymphia Marsilia albida. But like I say, I could have pronounced that totally wrong. So that's what you're looking for if you want lilies in a koi pond. Okay guys, just want to grab this quick. There's Nelly down there, up and about, feeding with the rest. Just had something to eat and she's up here. I took her a little bit of uh, sinking food in. She seems to go down and like being down the bottom for some reason. But she's up and about with the rest and being pretty normal again. So whether that parasite treatment's done some good or what, I don't know. I'm still going to do the clover leaf, but I'm grabbing this on my phone, so I hope it's coming out. But here she is, just down here, look. And she's up and about with the rest of them. And that's really good to see. I'm pleased about that. But I'm still going to do the fluke solve. I'm still going to give her a dose of that as well. Won't hurt them all to have a bit of a clear out of flukes. Fish do have them all the time anyway. You've always got flukes in your pond. They're not a problem until they get out of hand. Normally a slime coat on a fish will keep them under control, but uh, if that slime coat thins out, well then that's when you get an epidemic of them. But it won't hurt, plus if she's got uh, worms or anything like that, it'll kill them off as well, if that's the problem. But she does like going to feeding on the bottom. She likes to bottom feed. So I've chucked her a bit of uh, sinking food in, and that's what she's round after at the moment. But she's up and about, and doing what she should. Well, I did say yesterday, I cleaned the uh, protein skimmer out yesterday, I couldn't see it making a lot for a couple of days, <laughs> and that's last night's bucket. So, that's, that's made me a liar. It worked perfectly again last night. And it was all clean. I didn't think these things worked very well when they was totally clean. But it's doing its job. I can't say any other. It's afternoon now and it's still putting it out. So, totally wrong. Worked perfect last night. That's got the lily trimmed back a bit. That's taking up a lot less pond. Actually see more of my fish. <laughs> but that's another job done. That's got that out of the way. Got a lot of dead stuff off that, and live stuff to be honest. But it's taken it down a, quite a lot. Okay guys, what I'm going to do now is a quick water test, just to make sure everything's okay. So we'll go and get a water sample from the pond. So bear with me. Okay, I see Nelly's up here. So when you're taking a water sample from your pond, what I actually do is I put the uh, container upside down, put it into the pond, under the water, and then turn it over and take my sample. That way I'm not just scooping it off the top, I'm getting a true sample. And my cat's there, look. <laughs> Follows me everywhere. I'll just get you on the tripod and we'll get this water test done. Right, I've got a couple of uh, containers there got more water so I'm going to put 10 mil in the first two, one's for ammonia and one's for nitrate. So I want about 10 mil in there and 10 mil in there. That's 10 mil in each of them and then I want 5 mil left in this one so I'm going to uh, tip a bit of this out because I've obviously got too much water so I'll tip a bit of that out. Uh, 
and that's my 5mm in there. Right, so now we're going to put the chemicals in. Uh, I shall start with the one, we'll do the ammonia first. Give it a quick shake and we shall want five drops of this in there. One, two, three, four, five. That's five drops of number one in. Give it a quick shake and now we want number two. Give it a little shake and one, two, three, four, five of that in. That's five of number two. Give it a little shake and now we want number three. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's all the chemicals in for the ammonia test. We'll just pop the lid on it, give it a quick shake and we shall need to look at that in 15 minutes. that's the ammonia done I'm going to do the nitrate next so it's number one five drops of that one two three four five shake again then we want number two one two three four five then we have to put the filings in just one small tiny spoonful of them in there so using the little miniature spoon I just want a tiny little scoop of that that's the filings in now we'll stick a top on this one's shaking for about 20 seconds it needs a good shake this one does to make sure it's really well mixed I usually show a bit of nitrate in my pond but it's nothing usually that's uh, worrying as I've said in the past the moving bed is turning out nitrate so you're bound to see a little bit of that in your pond so I never worry about that too much so that's that done now we're going to leave that there for 10 minutes now, the nitrate test needs 10 minutes now we've got the nitrite now we want five drops of that one two three four five that's the five drops of that lid on give it a quick shake okay so now we've got 15 minutes to wait for that one 10 minutes to wait for this one and five minutes to wait for this one so i'll pause you guys and i'll be back in five minutes and we'll have a look at the nitrite so, ammonia, nice and yellow. No ammonia in the pond at all. I've still got that tiny hint of nitrite, but it's had more than its time really. It's had about 10 minutes and it only should have had five. But I'm still showing that trace of nitrite in the pond. But then again, they were fed first thing this morning, so that's probably not helping. Nitrate, we're showing about 10 milligrams a litre there which is nothing to worry about at all I'm not too bothered about that like I say the moving bed does turn nitrate out so we're going to see some in the pond but about 10 milligrams on nitrate so nothing scary there really so there's nothing I'm worried about at all all's good on the water test oh guys I've had a real good tidy up all round the garden's had a good old tidy up and the pond's had a good old tidy up. So we're all looking really smart here at the moment. They're all waiting for something to eat, <laughs> as they always are. So I suppose I'd better get and feed them. The pond's all nice and clean, the sun's out, the plants are growing. We've got a beautiful day here today. The fish are all lively. So all it leaves me to say from a very sunny South Lincolnshire. Thanks for watching, you all take care, and as always, happy ponding.